Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your light appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing nigh. I'll pray and watch and wrestle, at midnight comes the cry. The waters on the mountain proclaim the bridegroom near. Go forth as he approaches with alleluia's clear. The marriage feast is waiting, the gates wide open stand. Arise, O heirs of glory, the bridegroom is at hand. The saints who hear in patience their cross and sufferings bore, shall live and reign forever when sorrow is no more. 
Around the throne of glory the Lamb they shall behold. In triumph cast before thee their diadems of gold. Our hope and expectation, O Jesus, now appear. Arise, O sun, so long for, o'er this benighted sphere. With hearts and hands uplifted, we plead, O Lord, to see. The day of earth's redemption, that sets your people free. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins... God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. So have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Let your light scatter the darkness. We light the Advent candle and wait for Christ to come. With hope we trust the promise that he will bring us home. Our hope is in our Savior who wins for us God's favor. We wait with growing light Till God makes all things right We light the Advent candle And thank the Lord for rest With peace we know our Jesus has come to be our guest. This peace beyond all knowing within our hearts is glowing. We wait with growing light till God makes all things right. We light the Advent candle and sing with cheerful heart. With joy we spread the message and blessing to impart. Joy is never ending, the sun to us is sent. Ending, we wait with growing light 
Till God makes all things right. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Righteousness will go before him and shall make his footsteps our pathway. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks be to God. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. done great things for us, and we are glad. Bring forth our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. When tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. 
is the Son of God. That's what the message is that we, we hear in that song. And that was the message that Mary was told by an angel. An angel came to Mary and said, Behold, you are going to be a mom. I'd like to read to you a few verses from Luke chapter 1. It says, And the Lord God will give to him and, and says, and behold, you will, you will be, you'll conceive in your womb and, and her, have a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. She even, the angel even told Mary the name of the baby boy would be Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said in her to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called, called Holy, the Son of God. Wow, what amazing news that was given to Mary. It wasn't just a regular baby. We have a little baby with us today. His name's Asher, and he's going to be baptized shortly. He's going to be baptized so that he can be united with the baby Jesus who is now reigning over us in heaven. Jesus came to save his people. That's what his name means, right, Joy? And he came and he took our sins upon himself and he suffered and he died and he rose again. Well, Mary didn't know all those things. <laughs> she didn't know all the details. Mary, did you know? Well, she's gonna, she, would, she would find out what kind of things did, did Jesus do that we sung about, Joy? What did he do to the blind man? He gave sight to the blind man, right? Right? He calmed the storm with his hand. He raised the dead. He did many, many miracles that show that he is the Son of God. And that was the good news for the people. The Messiah had finally come. God is with us. You know, today we hear especially about a man who prepared the way for Jesus' coming. And his name was John the Baptist. 
And he was a little bit different. He wore camel's skin. And, and I got this little, little jacket here that, that was made out of camel. And, and it helps you sort of understand the kind of clothing that, that John wore. And he also ate this. What's this? He ate some honey. And he ate wild honey, wore a leather belt. And one more thing that he ate, he ate grasshoppers. We got a bowl of grasshoppers here. And this one looks like it's got a little sauce on it, just to give it a little more flavor. This one looks like the, he put it on top of an egg and a, and a pita bread. Basically, people in the Middle East still eat these locusts. Wild locusts, I guess they're good in protein. Well, do you want to eat one, Joy? No, I don't think so either. I don't want to eat one either. But God provided for, for John the Baptist to eat these things. And he didn't have to worry about going to get food. God provided and his message. He just focused on. And that was that the people needed to repent and be baptized and be forgiven of their sins. Kept their, everything so simple. And that's what God's love for us is in Jesus Christ, our Savior. The message to, that was given to Mary, the message that John proclaimed, now comes to you and to me that we're saved through our baptisms. That's the greatest news, isn't it, Joy? Let's go now and, and share this news with others. Go now in his peace. Amen. to God. We rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Now this is a testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? That we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now those who were sent were from the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he who coming after me is preferred before me whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Now we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. You may be seated. We will now sing the hymn of the day when all the world was cursed. And you can begin singing when you hear the instruments begin to play. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text for this third Sunday in Advent is from our Gospel reading, John chapter 1, verse 7. This man, speaking of John the Baptist, came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him, that is John the Baptist, might believe. Here ends our text. So we just sang, When all the world was cursed by Moses' condemnation, St. John the Baptist came with words of consolation. Sometimes we think of John the Baptist as one of just having a harsh, stern message of the law. No! He prepared the people's hearts with the law, our hearts with the law, in order to give the message of consolation, 
of forgiveness and life in Jesus Christ, the light, and he witnessed to the light. We thank God for the clear and enduring witness of John the Baptist of the salvation found in Jesus Christ. We look today at his witness and his confession. For he bore witness to the light. And there's only one true light, Jesus Christ, who illumines the darkness of all men's sin. Jesus is the one who said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Where there is light, there is life. Life in Jesus Christ. John the Baptist tells us where this life can only be found in the one and only in the one he is witnessing to, Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was told by God that upon whom the Holy Spirit descends as a dove, this is the one, this is the Messiah that we've been waiting for. So we hear John speak these words of exactly what happened at Jesus' baptism three verses after our gospel reading. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. John tells us what he has seen, what he has testified, that the Son of God has come, Jesus Christ, in the flesh, his first-hand witness of Jesus reaches our ears this morning. We hear the witness of John telling us that the, that the power of the Holy Spirit that descended upon Jesus, that same Holy Spirit also shines His light of salvation in our hearts through faith so that we too believe that Jesus is the light of the world. That was John's whole message. He said, this man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him would believe. All. That's a very important word. Not just for people 2,000 years ago, a select few. All people who hear the message of John would believe. John's faithful witness to the light is for all people and God wants no one to perish. For John tells us the true light who gives light to every man coming into the world. That's verse 9 from our gospel reading. The true light gives light to every man. God's love is, is for all people. Of course, all people need this love. As we said, when the world was cursed, all men have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We know from Romans chapter 3, 23, John said he wasn't even worthy to loose the sandal strap of Jesus' sandal, nor are we. But John's message of repentance then showcases the good news of the Savior, the one who has come. For John doesn't leave us in despair when we look at our crooked, sinful lives, our roads which are not straight. No, when we repent, he says, now look at the Lamb, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Again, all people's sin, not just some, your sin, my sin, Asher's sin, who will soon be baptized. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This was the verse spoken right after our gospel reading in verse 29. Those words, all, every world, is, is a witness of John that proclaims that God wants all people to be saved in the world, even in this 21st century, especially now in your lives too. So Paul, after he first showed us the law. In Romans 3.23, he said, All men have sinned, fall short of the glory of God. What came next was the glorious gospel message. You know how the verse goes. Having just, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, in the one and only Christ Jesus. Justified freely, made right with God. Remember what the word justified means? Just as if I never sinned. That's what God gives to each person freely through our baptism. We are justified by grace. Thanks be to God, the all includes you and me, for we have believed this message of John in our days, in our lives. 
that has been preserved in God's holy word for us to hear this day. And thanks be to God that this message of John the Baptist's good news also comes to Asher Lee Grimes this morning. And he will receive the washing of his sins through holy baptism very shortly. Asher will receive the same baptism that John was, was giving to the people, the same washing of regeneration for the forgiveness of sins. Last week we heard from our, our gospel text in Mark chapter 1, these words. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for what? For the remission of sins. That's what baptism is. It is a sacrament, a sacrament which, which gives what Jesus won on the cross to our hearts through faith. John witnessed what God had commanded and given to sinful men, that baptism gives remission of sins. And through baptism, Jesus, the light of the world, illumines a sinful heart and makes it his glorious home. Amazing, isn't it? That Jesus dwells in our heart. The Holy Spirit makes his temple in our, in his, in our hearts, as we know from 1 Corinthians 3.16. We hear this from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. The consolation comes to your hearts through faith that your sins are forgiven. John confessed that he was not the Christ. He confessed he was a sinful man. But John confessed also who was the Christ, the Son of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, Yes, John knew that he was a sinful person. He confessed it. When, when Jesus came asking to be baptized by him, what was John's response? Do you remember in Matthew 3? I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? We all need to be baptized. Or we're all sinful people. And Jesus' response was this. Let it be so now, for, so that we would fulfill all righteousness. John learned that in order for Jesus to take our place as the innocent sacrificial lamb, he would have to place himself under all the ordinances that we also are under. God needed to fulfill all righteousness so that when Jesus said, it is finished on the cross, our baptisms unite us with the finished work of Jesus Christ. Everything is included. All sins are paid for. He gives us freedom from our sin by his payment for our sin. Paul makes this connection very, very clearly in, in Romans chapter 6 as he speaks about, about Jesus' death and his resurrection. Or do you not know that as many of us are, as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. That's what baptism gives to Asher, to you and to I. Forgiveness of sins, victory and, and over the death and, and the devil, freedom from sin and the devil, and the gift of eternal life. God freely and graciously bestows on all, us all these things. One more verse from Titus chapter 3. We, we need to hear about what baptism makes us. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, when he appeared, that moment that, that we've been waiting for, not by works of righteousness which we had done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us abundantly through Christ Jesus our Savior. And having been justified by his grace, there's that word again, we should become heirs according to the hope of of eternal life. That is a, a precious word, heirs. Asher becomes an heir through baptism of eternal life. All these blessings form our witness of what God has done for the world, what he's done personally for you and for me. For he has brought us into his family and made us his children and made us his heirs. 
Well, our witness then is to proclaim what God has done for us and to live to serve our Lord with all our lives. As Luther says in the small catechism, what does such baptizing with water signify? It signifies that the old Adam and us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil lusts, and again a new man daily come forth and arise who shall live before God in righteousness and purity forever. He has made each of us witnesses of his work. The new man rises daily as you repent and receive the blessings of your faith in Jesus Christ, as you make the sign of the cross on your forehead upon your heart, just as we will make the sign on Asher's forehead and heart, that you indeed are redeemed by Christ the crucified, and you go forth as witnesses of this great work. We are not the voice, the voice of John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the coming Savior in the wilderness. No, but we are a voice, a voice announcing that the Lamb has accomplished our salvation, the world's salvation. He has taken away our sins. And our voices repeat the witness of John, that the world may know that Jesus did come. For God's eternal word comes to sinners in our time through your voices as parents teach their children, as parents bring their children to the fount of baptism to have their children sins washed away as we reach out to our grandchildren and to all our family with the good news. All, all, we hear that word over and over again. God wants all people to believe and be saved. The message of John the Baptist that Jesus is the true light who gives light to every man coming to this world. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasseth all human understanding Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may stand now as we sing together the offertory. It is the 
Lord's delight. Prepare my heart, Lord Jesus, turn not from me aside, and help me to receive you this blessed advent time from stall and manger low come now to dwell within me i'll sing your praises gladly and share for glory show Peace be with you. Amen. You may be seated. And I invite Tim and Tammy to come forward. Beloved in the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation. Acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism and answer, yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways and answer, yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Then answer, yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? Then answer, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Then answer, I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death, I then answer, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Then answer, I do by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? Then answer, I do. Will you support the work of our, our gracious Lord that has been given to this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? Then answer, I will, with the help of God. Upon this your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, and that you receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with heart to believe and with mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith and in the fellowship of this congregation as together we wait the day when all whom have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to this congregation. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you both. Amen. And usually we'd give a handshake now, but because of COVID, we'll just, we'll just give an arm bump. <laughs> and I have some gifts for you this day also. Um, I have a, a mug for you, and you'd like to take the mug. And also... I have a pen. You can choose what color of pen. And also we have some little keychains for you. Okay. It has the name of our church on it. Okay. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. 
It's our joy to have you with us in our congregation in serving the Lord together. And now I invite also Benjamin and Anna and their little baby Asher to come forward for the, the sacrament of holy baptism. Good morning, so good to see you both. What a joyful day and this beautiful baptismal robe has been handed down to little Asher and the family. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that all were conceived and born sinful uh, under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How are you named? Asher Lee, receive the sign of the cross on your forehead and upon your heart in token that you have been redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family eight souls in all. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Asher according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit and that through this saving flood of all, all sin in him which has, he has inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since would be drowned and die, Grant that he would be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that all believers with him will receive your great promises, that he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I now ask you to answer in the, in the stead of Asher these questions. Do you renounce the devil? Then answer, I renounce him. I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Then answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Then answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Then answer, yes, I yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Then answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, then answer, yes I, yes, I believe. Do you desire to be baptized? And answer, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Right. Asher Lee Grimes, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water in the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
And as we mentioned, his beautiful baptismal robe reminds us of the robe of righteousness which is given to him through faith of Christ. Christ's righteousness clothes him, so his, his sins are forgiven. And also we have today a, a baptismal candle, which we will light now. As we've been hearing today, Jesus is the light of the world. He shines in the darkness of our sins. And on this day, December 13th, you can light this baptismal candle every year to remind him of the light of Jesus who has come into the world and now shines into his heart. We'll light the candle with a third Advent candle today. This beautiful candle represents the light of Jesus Christ who shines in you. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son and our Lord Jesus Christ and heir with us all of the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Asher the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. And if you like now, we'll, we'll all sing together, I am Jesus, little lamb. And especially this day, we have the joy of displaying uh, a piece of woodworking that, that Asher's grandpa made. Don carved it, and, and it has a little lamb, and on each little lamb that we put on the board, it has uh, the child's name. Jesus, little lambs. We sing together. I am Jesus, little lamb, ever glad at heart I am. For my shepherd gently guides me, knows my needs and well provides me, loves me every day the same, even calls me by my name. Day by day at home I'll wait. Jesus is my staff and stay. When I hunger, Jesus feeds me. Into pleasant pastures leads me. When I thirst, he bids me go. Where the quiet waters flow. Who's so happy as I am, even now the shepherd's lamb. And when my short life is ended, by his angel host attended, he shall fold me to his breast, there within his arms to rest. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all the people according to their needs. For the Holy Christian Church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God guard and defend us from all temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. For Pastor Matthew Harrison, our synodical president, and Pastor Mike Newman, our district president, for all pastors and services, servants of Christ, 
that they proclaim with faithfulness and clarity the true light of the gospel in all they do. Let us pray to the Lord. For the government and all who have been set in positions of leadership, that they use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of all people, let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love preserve and relieve them, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, especially we lift to your care Mark and Lester and Shirley Weber and Shirley Vogel, Suzanne Newhouse. We continue to lift to your loving care Helen and Erlene and Harriet. We ask that you would give healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We also lift to your loving care Nicole Hahn. We ask that you would help her through the trial that she is going through and the upcoming surgery. We ask that you would continue to grant her grace and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they always remember the giver of every good, good gift and give him heartfelt thanks, let us pray to the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Maybe see, we'll sing the final hymn. Lift up your heads, you everlasting doors.
bloodstained hands can meet the law's demands, whose purity within reveals one free from sin. Come praise the King, cleanse the 